In Puerto Rico, activists are set to march this weekend against the government's plan to build a natural gas pipeline that would intersect the island. The government-run electric agency called PREPA says the project would lower utility rates for residents and cut carbon emissions. But opponents of the project warn the 92-mile pipeline would cut through environmentally sensitive areas, threaten communities along the way, and continue the island's reliance on non-renewable resources. For more, we go to San Juan to speak with Dr. Arturo Masol. He's a professor of biology at the University of Puerto Rico and spokesperson with Casa Pueblo, one of the organizations leading the protest this weekend. Dr. Masol, first, outline your primary concerns with the project. Well, the worst part of the proposal is that the pipeline will be connected to uh, an international facility owned by Fenosa, an Spanish company, that they don't have the permit, not the storage capacity, neither the send-out capacity to provide gas for the pipeline. And yet the government is in, is insisting in building this destructive pipeline uh, for, for a technically incompetent project and environmentally unsafe. So the gas for this pipeline would have to be shipped in from somewhere else, is that right? Yes, but that's that's not the limiting factor. Uh, the limiting factor is once the fuel is in Puerto Rico, it comes as a liquid, and there's no way, there's no uh, infrastructure to deal with the with the fuel. Uh, so this the rationality behind this is very awkward, uh, not to say corrupt uh, administration at this point. You talked about the 92 miles that the proposed pipeline would cut through in the island. What is the karstic zone, and how could this project impact that area? Okay, so it will go from the south to the north of the island through the central mountain chain. Uh, Very steep slopes, uh, unstable soils. I mean, it's very difficult. And once it reaches the north part, It will feed uh, a power plant that produces only 1% of the total energy of the island. So it's a bad investment already. So once it reaches the north, it will go through the northern part of the island, through the karst, uh, which below that uh, we have the most important groundwater system that is used for agriculture, for, for industry and pharmaceuticals, and also for or urban development. Uh, and that water system will be impacted as well. Uh, the ecological sensitivity of that area is also at danger uh, because of this uh, proposal. And Dr. Masol, what about the impact on, on uh, endangered species or on wildlife in the area? Well, Puerto Rico is in the Caribbean, a hot spot for biodiversity. And along the way for the pipeline, there's a, the habitat of at least 32 endangered species. So we're talking about, you know, putting at risk a lot of natural resources, uh, including uh, those uh, vulnerable uh, species. And it's not just environmental concerns. You mentioned corruption. According to the Associated Press, the largest contract so far has gone to an engineering firm with no pipeline construction experience, and it's owned by a childhood friend of now Governor Luis Fortunio. We are going to open bid. Uh, the governor actually declared an a state of emergency, energy emergency, to bypass uh, bids and and contracts. So so under that umbrella. Uh, Governor Fortunio decided to point out his friend, uh, his ski partner, uh, as the main person to 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 deal with this uh, critical inf- uh, proposal. So there is a lot of uh, lack of trust, not only on the government but also on the technical aspects of the design, uh, and people are really highly concerned about this proposal. That's why we're having this uh, large uh, uh, protest on Sunday. Dr. Arturo Masol is with Casa Pueblo. That's one of the organizations leading the protest this weekend against a proposed gas pipeline in Puerto Rico. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good day.